Here's an applied optimization problem in three dimensions. A lot of these things that we ask are geometric, not all of them certainly, but a lot of them are geometric and some of them, a fair number, are in two dimensions. And people often get spooked when they're in three dimensions. But let me do a simple one. We want to find the cylinder of greatest uh, lateral area, not the top and bottom, just the sides. You can do this, you can include the top and bottom too, it's a different problem. It's actually in the book, um, and the answer is a little more complicated. Uh, inscribed in a sphere of radius r. And we're not going to make that a number, we're going to make that a letter. And that's actually a good thing because that's going to help us um, check stuff. This has units of length, and so our answer is going to have, the lengths are all going to have to be some number times r, and that's going to be a check. Okay, so here's the picture. Here's the 3D picture. Here's our sphere. It's not too hard to draw. Here's a cylinder. Not too hard to draw. We're not going to do anything where it's really hard. Oops, I can just, no, that's, okay. So there's our cylinder, and uh, it could be really skinny. Maybe it could be actually really skinny. Well, that might not have the best surface area because it's really tall, but it's pretty skinny. Or it could be really wide, but then it'd have to be really flat. That's probably not going to be the best either. So it's probably an interesting optimization problem in the sense that the endpoints aren't going to be the answers. Now, the endpoints can be the answers sometimes, but it's probably not here. Okay. Um, the key here, though, is uh, that there's really a 2D picture hiding, and that's just a cross section just slice it through with the plane of this board here and you really just get a, a rectangle and the key thing is that that's that slice is a circle so that's a circle of radius r and now I just need uh, names for the width now one thing that often confuses people is they want to use r for the width of the cylinder sorry it's already the radius of the circle so let's just use x it's a horizontal in the picture and that's just exactly x right here. Hey, that's an x in a right triangle. And what about the height? Well, you could use the full height, but it's going to be better if we actually just use this as y. And then the whole height's going to be 2y. So that's y right there. Hey, I've got a right triangle. That's a constraint right there. Okay. So we've discovered our constraint, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And the key was taking a 3D picture and reducing it down to a key 3D, 2D picture. This 3D picture is just this picture re revolved around the middle of it. And that's very common. Most of the 3D examples, well, I think every 3D example we would do in this class in AB Calculus would be symmetrical in some ways. So it's secretly really a 2D problem. Okay, so there's our constraint. What's our objective function? Well, that's the one place where we really do use the 3D nature, but just in terms of memorizing a formula. What's the, the lateral surface area, just the sides of this guy? Well, it's 2 pi x, because remember the x is the radius of the cylinder, so that's the circumference of, say, the bottom, times the height, which is 2y. And so the surface area, the lateral surface is 4 pi xy. Okay, almost got it down to where we want. We've got a constraint, we've got an objective function, and I've been emphasizing the last couple days um, that you really want, uh, this is the stage where you want to be careful about your bounds as well. And uh, it's very simple, just x and y have got to be non-negative numbers, they're lengths. And, let's, and we'll see how that comes into the rest of the problem. So that's a really important thing if you're going to be careful about this stuff. All right, now I'm going to erase it all except for that crucial data. Okay, let's solve the constraint. Uh, it looks very symmetrical here. X and Y come in symmetrically, in the, in the these uh, inequalities they come in symmetrically in here, so it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and solve Y is R squared. Sorry, Y squared is R squared minus X squared. So Y is the square root of R squared minus X squared. We don't need a plus or minus because we've decided that it's a length, and um, we don't get anything from like flipping stuff upside down that's different, so that's going to be just plus. And so my a of x now is going to be 4 pi x root r squared minus x squared. And now is the time to take these sort of uh, simple constraints and turn them into um, a boundary, uh, an interval, thank you, for, uh, 
for x, well, x has to be non-negative. And then if y is going to be non-negative, whoa, that means, or if y is even going to make sense for this problem, the biggest x can be is equal to r, which makes sense. If you look back at the picture, I'm not going to redraw it. Um, that's where it kind of becomes a pancake. And uh, it's clearly not going to be the maximum, but that's going to be our interval. So one thing you can do very often is you can just check the endpoints right away. x equals 0. Clearly, a of 0, this dies, and you get 0. Boring. x equals r. a of r equals this dies, and you get 0. And that's because the, the long, skinny pencil and the big pack pancake, they both kind of degenerate to 0 area. OK, so um, all right, now we're going to need to take the derivative of that. And I think I just need to redraw. The great thing is you can always rewind. So don't be afraid to rewind. OK, so let me write, write up a of x one more time, a little higher this time. 4 pi x root r squared minus x squared. a prime of x, 4 pi is a constant. Now we need the product rule. So it's all times 1 times the square root plus x times 1 over 2 times the square root. That's the derivative of a square root function. And then times minus 2x from the chain rule. Now I'm going to set that equal to 0. So the 4 pi is very quickly going to be uninteresting. Now I'm going to put it over a common denominator, although let's cancel out the 2's first. So putting this over a common denominator of the square root of r squared minus x squared, that bumps it up to a full r squared minus x squared. And then minus x squared. Oh, so that's just r squared minus 2x squared. So if I'm setting that equal to 0, I can divide by the 4 pi. I can go ahead and multiply by this. And I know that's not 0 because um, this would all go completely haywire. And I already checked that, by the way. Um, anyway, that was when x was equal to r. And I know that's not interesting. And so it's just r squared minus 2x squared equals 0. Or x squared is r squared over 2, or x is r over root 2. I don't need a plus or minus because x is a length. I'm already interested only in x squared equal to 0. OK, so that's the critical point. Now, from the geometry, it's obvious that that's a maximum. Um, so this is one place where we don't really have to do a derivative test. If we look at a of x, we already checked it's 0 when x is 0 and 0 when it's r. And we know it's clearly positive. It's a product of positive numbers. So it has to look like that. Okay, So we don't absolutely have to go back to um, the derivative or take second derivatives or whatever. It's not that hard, though. Let's look. In this, the, did we do anything weird about signs here? No, we cancel out a positive and a positive. So we could just do a first derivative sign chart on really this quantity, r squared minus 2x squared. OK, well, when x equals 0, or small, it's plus. When our x is r over root 2, it's 0. That's why, we find, that's why we found that to be interesting. And when x gets bigger than that, you're taking r squared minus something bigger than r squared, and it's minus. So there's a first derivative test to really cement it in. But in any case, we either.